Hi everyone, it's the Calculady, and welcome back to my channel, where it is my mission to demystify Common Core in the age of technology one video at a time. So today we are going to be looking at an IXL um, assignment on complementary, supplementary, vertical, and adjacent angles. So we are going to be going through those definitions, talking a little bit about what those mean, what the diagrams look like, and then I will be showing some examples. So this first part will be a refresher of those definitions and diagrams. If you already know them and you're ready to move on to the examples, go ahead and skip in the video a bit to go to the first IXL example. So I'm going to write some notes for these four types of angles. The first one we have is complementary. So I'm going to do it on note cards so I can reference them later when I'm actually completing the problems. So a set of complementary angles are angles whose sum equals 90 degrees. And this definition is pretty simple, but it's hard to make sense of without a diagram. So we're going to draw a picture. I'm going to draw an L as best I can, and then I'll explain what the parts mean. All right, so I have an L shape or a 90 degree angle, and I'm going to label the inside corner with a small box which will indicate that this is supposed to be 90 degrees. Obviously, I'm freehanding this, so it won't be perfect, but if you were to do it on a computer, it would look pretty similar. And our complementary angles are going to be two angles, or more, but generally two angles that together equal this one 90 degree angle. So I'm going to split this in half by drawing another arrow out from the corner to indicate that there are two angles within that 90 degree angle. And I'm going to label them by letters A and B. And to make sure we know how to solve these problems, I want to write an equation that represents what A and B would equal together. So if I have A and B combined, and they are complementary, they will always equal 90 degrees. All right, let's switch to supplementary. Supplementary is the same basic idea. Supplementary angles are angles whose sum equals 180 degrees. So for this diagram, it's going to look a little different. Instead of using an L shape or a 90 degree angle, we're going to use a straight line. And we're going to draw a line out from the middle. And that line out from the middle just indicates that that straight line has been split into two parts, the same way my first one had. Complementary and supplementary angles can be three or more angles, but generally, especially for the beginning types of these problems, you'll see two. So I will label them A and B. And mathematically, as an equation, that will look like A plus B equals 180 degrees. Excellent. Halfway done. The next one is vertical angles, which is actually my favorite. All right, so my vertical angles are equal angles across from each other formed by two intersecting lines. Intersecting lines are just straight lines that cross in some space. And when that happens, you form equal angles on either side of that cross section. So let's show what that looks like. I'm going to create a diagram of two lines. They can be any which way, it doesn't matter. Any two straight lines that cross will form vertical angles. And I will label them A and B. And these two angles that are across from each other that have been made by these lines are in fact equal. So my equation would just be A equals B. I'm going to use a different color to show another set of vertical angles that would be formed in this diagram. If I were to have these sides as well being indicated, like C and D, they would also be equal. If 
because both angles have been formed by those two intersecting lines and they are directly across from each other so they will have equal measures. All right and my very last one is adjacent angles. So adjacent angles are angles that are next to each other by sharing a side or a vector. So if I have an angle that looks like this, and we'll call it A, and I put another angle right next to it so that it shares this line and forms a new angle right next to it called B, those angles are next to each other because they share this side, which is a vector. It has a point on one side and an arrow on another. And if I were to combine them, and I were to create an arc where both of them were included, and that angle was called C, then A plus B would equal C. Adjacent angles don't have any special values. They don't equal 90 or 180 or anything else. They are just random. But complementary and supplementary angles are both types of adjacent angles. So let's add that in below. Complementary and supplementary are types of adjacent angles. Okay, now that we have our four definitions, we can actually start solving. So I'm going to keep these handy so that I can reference which one I will want for my IXL problems. Okay, so on this first problem here, it says, what is the value of D? So I don't have any special values. I don't have a 90. I don't have 100. 80, and it doesn't look like they're across from each other. So if none of those apply, it looks like I am left with my adjacent angles. It has to be. So I'm going to use this definition. I'll put it down below so I can make sure to reference it. And I'm going to create an equation that will help me solve for this set of adjacent angles. So I know my two inside angles are 40 and D, and together they will equal 70. So to deal with that, to solve for D, I will simply use my multi-step equation systems, and I will subtract 40 from both sides. And D will equal 30 degrees. Not too bad. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Now I am looking for the value of H. And it says I have 30 and H, and it looks like together they form a straight line. So I'm going to look for my diagram that has a straight line. And it looks like it is right here. I have this straight line on this diagram, and I've got this straight line next to the 30 and the H. And so I know that 30 and H are supplementary angles. So I am going to write an equation using 30 and H. And because they are supplementary, I know they must equal 180 degrees. And again, I will use multi-step equation systems to solve. Subtract 30 from both sides. And H will equal 150 degrees. Awesome. Okay, now we have angles that are across from each other. They are across from each other. I know they can't be any kind of adjacent angles because adjacent angles are all next to each other in some way. Complementary angles equal 90 and supplementary angles equal 180. Vertical are just across from each other. And my definition of vertical angles says equal angles across from each other formed by two intersecting lines. And the important part of that definition that I want to look at is that equal angles part. If vertical angles are always equal, that means that in this diagram, G and 50 must be the same, which simply means that 50 equals G. So I can just type in 50. Awesome. We're going to jump a level to see if we can get something else. Awesome. So now we have some that don't have the diagram, but it does tell us that we are dealing with a complementary angle. So I'm going to get my note card out for complementary angles. 
going to put it up here so I have space. And the question reads, the measure of an angle is 68 degrees. What is the measure of its complementary angles? Well, I can draw the diagram, which I'm going to do. There should be a little box, and I'll divide it. This one looks like it's a little bit bigger, and I know that half of 90 is 45, so I know the bigger one is going to be more than 45. So 68 is more than 45, so I'll put that here. It doesn't really matter, though. And I'll just call this x because it doesn't give me a variable, so I'll just use our most common variable. And then I can turn it into an equation like I have on my note card. x plus 68 equals 90. Two step, or one step equation by subtracting the 68 to get x completely by itself. And x equals 22 degrees. All right, I think that's it for me. So thank you for coming back to my channel and watching this video. Hopefully they're helpful for you to understand these math concepts. Please like and subscribe and certainly post your comment requests of which videos you'd like to see me do next so I can work through the different assignments that you guys are actually working on and can use. It's come to my attention that some of my former students who are now in high school or junior college are also logging into my YouTube channel. So if you're one of those students, feel free to request some of your work as well. I definitely can do a tutorial from um, high school or college level. That's not a problem at all. So thank you guys. And until next time, remember that if you work hard and believe in your potential, your limit does not exist.